linoleum cutting is actually very dangerous because uh, you probably stab yourself. And I did at least twice during this project. and welcome back to another video. I'm really excited about today's video. I'm going to talk about how I printed my own fabric and I recovered this rocking chair. Now this rocking chair has been in my family for a long time. It was my grandma's who passed away before I was born so it's a very special piece of furniture for me. My mom rocked my brother and I in it when we were babies and I rocked my son and now it's in my daughter's room. It was starting to really fall apart. It had like a little hole in the cushion that was uh, leaking like foam out of it. Not great to have in a child's bedroom with a little baby crawling around or a two-year-old toddler crawling around. I definitely didn't want my kids eating any weird old shredded foam that I had no idea really uh, what it was made of. Obviously I'm not going to get rid of this family heirloom, this beautiful rocking chair that's super sentimental and special. So I decided that I was going to redo the cushions. The bottom cushion just needed to be completely remade since it was really falling apart. So I started to look around for fabric for uh, the chair and I was having the hardest time finding something that really spoke to me. I, I wanted something really special, I wanted something really timeless to fit in with the whole decor of my daughter's room, which is where I think it'll probably live for a very long time. But I had a really hard time finding a fabric that I liked. Uh, I started looking on Etsy and I found some really beautiful like block printed fabric that was really speaking to me and I just thought it was gorgeous. But it's just so expensive and I'm really trying to do all this on a small budget and it just was not in my budget to be buying really expensive hand printed fabric. The wheels in my head started turning and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make my own fabric. I'm gonna print my own fabric. I could do this. This block printing is not that difficult to do. I took printmaking class in college and I know how to do lino cuts and I was like, I think I can make my own fabric and then I can make it look exactly the way I want, exactly the color I want. So that's what I ended up doing. Today I'm gonna to show you how I did it. <laughs> so first of all, I needed the base fabric in order to print on. And luckily, if you watched my last video about how I recovered my couch, you'll know that I bought 14 yards of fabric off Facebook Marketplace for lit I can't remember how much it was, like $30. And it's this very nice, basic, blue striped fabric. And so I thought, you know what, that would actually look really pretty with the colors in my daughter's room. I did a painting on her wall that's got a lot of nice, like, blues and teals and grays, kind of going for like a French country look in her room. So. I went online and I just started looking at different floral patterns and designs and I found two that I really liked and so I ended up getting a linoleum block and I got a clear linoleum block. Clear linoleum blocks are great if you're doing any kind of printing where you won't need to like line it up with another print underneath or the stripe. In this case I needed to line it up with the stripes because you can see through the block. All you need is a lino cutting tool and just carve out your design in the block. Another good thing about having the clear linoleum, you could just trace a pattern on it and then just carve it out. I know when you're doing a pattern that's symmetrical, it can be really hard. Wow, it's getting really bright. I think the sun's coming out through the fog. <laughs> Hang on one second. <laughs> So pretty out. It's a really beautiful day. Anyway, it can be really hard when you're doing a pattern like that to keep everything symmetrical. So the clear is great because you can just trace it and then you can carve out your pattern from there.
block. I then had to start figuring out what kind of fabric paint to use. I bought a few different, well we had some actual fabric paint that my husband had bought a while ago for a project and I tried to use that but that was way too transparent. And then I got some fabric paint at the craft store, general like acrylic fabric paint and that also was too transparent. I ended up going to the art store and finding block printing fabric paint. And that worked really good. Uh, it was really easy to work with. It was nice and thick. The pigment was great. I just got the primary colors in that paint and used that and mixed my own color. I wanted like a nice deep, kind of an orangey, browny, burgundy <laughs> color. So I used black, yellow, and red. And that worked great. And I got a really nice deep burgundy color out of that. And then I just started to print the fabric. It's literally just like making a stamp and then stamping it onto the fabric. Now you'll notice a little bit in my print, there's little imperfections in the printing. This is one of the things that I liked about the block printing look was you get those little imperfections, you get the, the little handmade flaws. Once I was done finishing printing the fabric, I then moved on to sewing it into a cover for the top part of the rocking chair. The top cushion on the rocking chair was in decent condition so I didn't really need to worry about remaking that. So all I did was make a really simple slip cover to go over the top. So cutting out a piece of fabric that was the same dimensions as the back. So the bottom edges, I sewed a nice hem at the bottom there to finish that off really nicely. I just sewed the two sides, so it was kind of like a tube <laughs> of fabric. And then I could just put that right over the back and I then measured the top to where those little straps that come around the top and button onto the back to keep it in place. I just measured the opening there and I sewed the seam there. And then I just sewed two little um, like covers to go over the button strap things that go across the back. Now I just cut a hole in the back for the snap to go through.
area and make it so it wasn't a raw edge. And this fabric does kind of tend to fray a lot of the edges, so I just got some nail polish. I uh, did some research because I didn't want to go to the store and to find out what else I could use to stop the fabric from fraying and a lot of people said nail polish, clear nail polish. And I had clear nail polish at home. So I used that and I have to say it worked great. So I just did it on any seam that I felt like was going to unravel. was a little bit more complicated but still pretty simple. I had leftover foam from my couch project. I always like to keep things that I have left over. It's so nice to just be able to go and be like, oh, I already have foam. I don't need to go buy foam. It's better for the environment, reusing things like this. I know a lot of these foams can like off-gas a lot of chemicals when they're brand new. And so if you can use like older foam, it's actually better. So I just used that and I used the old cushion as a template to cut out the new foam. together because they were like thin pieces of foam so I just glued two together to make it thicker. shape as the foam with a little bit extra for seam allowance. And I just then cut a long strip of fabric that was the same width as the height of the cushion. Then I just sewed the strip of fabric on along the edge of the top piece of the cover. that also on the bottom and I made sure to leave an opening in the back big enough for me to be able to put the foam in to the cover. just stitched up by hand the back where I had the hole and sewed that right up. So that's pretty much it and now this rocking chair be used for hopefully generations to come. It would be really amazing if my kids rocked their babies in this rocking chair and I feel like I kind of gave it a new life. It's a really special piece for me and I hope you guys really enjoyed watching me print my own fabric. I am very excited to do it again. I thought it was very easy and really fun and it's such a great way to have a custom and special piece of fabric that you made.
One little thing though that's gonna happen when you're doing lino cuts, you're gonna cut yourself. You're gonna probably stab yourself a few times. I uh, had a little, there was little moments of blood going on <laughs> when I was doing the cutting every time I've ever done linoleum cuts, even when I was in school, we when we did lino, linoleum cuts, I don't know, it's kind of just the nature of the beast, I think. So just a warning, be very careful, take your time, go slow, make sure you don't have your hand in front of where you're cutting. Like, don't hold the thing and cut toward your fingers. Keep your fingers away from where you're cutting, because uh, you probably stab yourself. And I did, at least twice during this project. Linoleum cutting is actually very dangerous. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and I have a few projects coming up in the future. Hopefully I be able to get them out a little quicker than this one. I just have so much going on. Anyway, everybody, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and I hope that you can take it as inspiration to maybe do it yourself. Print your own fabric. It's really not as hard as it seems. It was really fun and really easy. Slightly dangerous, but I'm sure you'll survive. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like these kind of videos and like and comment and everything like that. I am just starting to make these. I would like a lot of engagement so that I get a bit of a wider audience in, in order to share these fun projects with people. Um, so anything helps and I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much, bye.